What's going on YouTube? I'm assuming if you're here you've blown a head gasket and you need to learn how to deck a head at home or you saw my thumbnail and wondered what the heck this moron's doing with an orbital sander next to his aluminum head. Well either way stick around watch the show and maybe you'll learn something today. Here's the problem, the head gasket was actually okay. Um, there's a crack right here. You can see it was leaching down and into the side. So there's a couple ways you can actually, if you didn't see the crack, there's a couple ways you can check for it. I'll show you that in a sec. I decided to clean this cylinder up. You can see the difference. Check it for damage. And I don't see a crack there. Um, I actually think that's just the, uh, basically burn through. So the head gasket probably failed and uh, the ignition, the fire was actually working its way through to the water jacket there. Um, believe it or not, that happens. More so, you'll see it in like boosted uh, engines, you know, with turbos and things like that. Um, but uh, anyways, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna do the uh, the die test. So I've got these, I've had them kicking around for years. So step one, you spray it on. Uh, it's basically uh, like a cleaner. And then I put the die penetrant on. And then the last one here is the, the very last step. You wipe this off and then you spray this on and it'll tell me if there's any crack in there. Um, you'll see the, the dye accumulate in the crack. Step one, complete. Now I gotta wait 15 minutes. Okay, so after you've let it dry, I leave it for 15. The can says minimum five. So, I mean, that's where you're at. Anyway, um, so, this is a cleaner. You do not want to spray this directly on the part. You want to wipe it off because you want it to stay down inside that crack if there is one. Okay, it's that simple. Now the last step is the developer and it's white and you want to stay about a foot away. Just give it a super light coat like that. And then start watching for a crack. So you can see, it's obviously there. And I don't see anything down in here at all. There's a teeny little dot right there. But I don't believe that's a crack. I think that's just a little bit of leftover. I think I'm gonna fix this. This thing's gold. Yeah, so I can fix this. So I guess I'm gonna show you the old school trick of how I do it. And I've had people freak out before saying, you can't do that and whatnot, but um, I can do it. I've done it a ton of times and I've actually never had an issue with it at all. And um, mainly what I used to do it on was turbo engines. So they were pushing 20 plus pounds of boost and there was never an issue. So um, you can do it. Don't listen to other people. Um, basically innovation wouldn't, uh, wouldn't happen if people listen to the naysayers, right? So. Okay, real quick and dirty here. You need your sander. You're gonna need some spray paint. You'll see why later at the end of the video. It's feeler gauge, straight edge, a mic. The feeler gauges, specs can vary, so you're going to need to look that up for your own specific head. In my case, I know it's 3 thou. Um, it may be 2 thou up to 8, depending on what you're uh, using. I, you know, some trucks with uh, V8 heads and whatnot, it could be 8 thou on those kinds of things, depending if it's, you know, aluminum or um, cast steel kind of thing. So you're going to want to definitely check those specs out. Uh, most important thing to know, this little step here, this ledge right there, there's another one. Those are indicators. Um, some heads will actually have, you know, a piece that comes out here half circle and it'll have a circle inside of it. Um, what that's for is when you're, you're milling a head down, you can actually check the thickness. It'll tell you, 
you know, how much more you can remove or if the head's already been machined once before and maybe you can't do it again, that's an indicator. So you definitely want to call your, um, your dealer, talk to a service tech or look it up on Google even and find out how much material should be there and how much you can remove. And that's where your mic comes in handy. You're going to use that little peg on the end there to check it. I would show you, but mine died. Anyways, um, it's important to know that information because you're going to change your compression ratio slightly here. Uh, you also could change your valve clearance to the piston. So that spec is very, very important to know. I don't see anybody really mentioning that sort of thing. They don't talk about those other issues. Um, that's why I'm telling you. I want to make sure that you're informed about that before you try and do something like this, okay? Okay, so although this thing was leaking coolant, um, it never overheated. It never got to the point of overheating. So I suspect it's not going to be warped. And basically what you want to do is check crisscross pattern. We are gold. Oh, got a little bit of movement there. You want to hold it as flat as possible. Oh, we're good. What I'm doing is I'm trying to sneak the three thou feeler gauge underneath the ruler and in between the head. If it does sneak through and I feel drag, then I'm probably safe. I'm probably right at the three thou mark. But if it slips under without any resistance at all, I want to step up to the four thou and try again. And if that sneaks under, I'm going to step up to the five thou and so on until I find one that doesn't sneak under. And that'll indicate how much material we have to remove off of the head to get this flat. So there's a little bit there. Well, that's actually oops, more than acceptable. There we go. It's not the best straight edge in the world. But that's all you do. You just check with a feeler gauge. This is four thou. And uh, I use that because I know I'm going to shave more than four thou off to get that out of there. So um, that's easily ten thou, maybe a little more. So we're going to deck this down, see how it comes out. Because I mean, the thing otherwise, right now the head basically is shot. If you can't fix that, it's garbage. So if there's a chance at fixing it yourself, do it. Uh, worst case is uh, you get this little bit out of alignment and maybe you take it into a machine shop and they mill it the rest of the way if there's room or you'll buy another $50 head. 220 grit paper on a DA. And yeah, I know, it's impossible to get this straight. This is the first step to mill it down a little bit. Once I get that done, I'll put the paper down on the table, I'll drop this on there, and I'll slide it back and forth casually. So I'm going to be at this for a while, I'll kick back on when it's ready. Okay, so we're banging away here. Right now everybody's yelling at the computer screen, you can't do that, you're going to ruin that head. Well, guess what? Oops, a lot of times people tell you stuff because they've been told it and they were told by someone that didn't know what the hell they were doing or what the hell they were talking about. So you want to keep checking this as you go. You want to make sure it's actually better. There was a little bit of an opening back here before, now there's not. See, I flipped around here. We're looking golden. I'm going to keep right on, on trucking. You can see here, we're getting to it. I'm hitting it with some 80 grit. I definitely recommend you don't do that if it's the first time doing this. You can screw your head up pretty bad if you don't know what you're doing. You've got to keep that sander as flat and as flush on the surface as possible. You've got to stay moving all the time. You don't stop. If you see a black spot or something in here like this, you don't sit there and focus on it to grind it out because then you're going to have a, a misshapen head. It's not going to seal. You've got to just keep moving and take the surface down evenly all the way. And you've got to stop and keep checking with your um, straight edge and your uh, feeler gauge. Check constantly every couple of minutes just to make sure you're not getting it around. Make sure you're not rounding the sander over the edges it's always flat and it's just always moving alternate your patterns change them up keep them going as long as you're always moving if this thing starts getting torn up too much on the corners like this one here it's due to be changed change it you don't want to have any rough edges or anything goofy that's gonna you know, distort the shape of this so you can see we're almost down a little bit more probably another minute maybe a little 
more and that'll be out. Okay, we're golden. Tiniest little mark there. I'm not even concerned about it. These two rounded down just a hair on me. I'm not concerned. They're not bad. All in all, it's come out really good so far. So now I'll show you the next step. All right, so you can see what I've got going now. That's a bunch of 220 self-adhesive uh, paper. Usually I use the flat sheets with a little bit of 3M adhesive, but I'm all out of the adhesive, so this will work just as good. So now you just take your, your head. I basically milled that, and <laughs> now I want to deck it. So set it down. You want to make sure it's good and clean and flat. I should have cleaned the whole head up, but anyway. So you don't want to press at all. You want to use the weight of the cylinder head itself and you want to, you can move it in any direction this way in an X pattern, all those directions. And the main reason you want to do that is just like body work. If you sand in a straight line, if some of the sandpaper is not perfectly flat or there's a bubble or there's a tiny warp in the table or whatever, you're going to wear those grooves into this head. So we're going to go this way, this way, this way, this way, and then I'm going to spin the head around, do it again, and I'm going to keep doing that. Again, you don't want to lift it. You want to leave it to its own weight. You don't want to press down on it at all. And I got one bad strip. I caught an edge, so I'm going to flip it around, see if I can save it. It's much better with full sheets. You have the square sheets and you just glue them all down, but you still catch edges on those too sometimes. looking really good it's coming out really good actually I'm happy so far um, I'm not concerned about the different scratch marks in different directions it's actually a benefit if you have all the lines going in one direction that's actually more likely you'll have a leak um, if you think of um, cross hatching in a cylinder it's the same kind of idea you want that cross because that's gonna help keep the uh, compression So I'm going to spin this around now. And do it again. And then after I've done this for a few minutes, um, I'm going to check it again with my uh, uh, straight edge and the feeler gauge. I'm going to put my mask back on because that was kind of stupid that I blew on that. You don't want to breathe that aluminum dust in stuff is bad news can cause um, Alzheimer's and some other nasty things you don't want Okay, so I'm down to the absolute last step. It's coming out really good, I'm really happy with it. So what I've done is I've just taken a spray can, black paint, stayed back, you know, about a foot, foot and a half, and gave it the lightest little spatter, I'm just letting that dry. And once it's fully dry, I'll go ahead, I'll flip it over, 
I'll rub it across the surface again. And what that's going to do is it's going to show us if there's any low spots. Uh, if we have any dips and valleys, like right in here, I think is a little low. Uh, and possibly a little bit here. It, it's really hard to get it perfectly flat using the orbital. Um, but it got us really, really close. There's hardly any work now. We just have to, you know, sand hand it back and forth a little bit. Again, don't put any pressure down because if you press a little harder, say with your right hand versus your left, you're going to mill this on an angle. You're not going to get this flat and that's what you want. You want this flat. It's got to be completely uh, flat to mate with the deck surface of the block. Uh, you don't want it on an angle. You don't want any dips. You don't want any dip waves or valleys or anything. So you've got to be super careful, pay close attention to what you're doing and just keep moving. Don't sand in one spot, sand the entire surface together as one. So I literally only did this for about 10 seconds. And as you can see, it's exactly where I thought. It's a little low in here and that's not a concern. So I'll just keep filing until this is all gone. You can already see it's starting to scuff it a little bit. And this is the lowest point here. And I'm not surprised because when you're doing this pattern, you know, it's very hard to stay consistent. And that's why we do this after. Now, if I didn't have that big mark that was burned in the cylinder right in here, I would have just done this step. I wouldn't have done the orbital, but I had a lot of material to take down quick. That's where the orbital comes in. If you need to deck that surface down, um, if you're just looking to make sure it's flat and straight and have a good prepared surface for a gasket, just do this step. But if you've got something like I had there with a little check and you want to mill it down, use the orbital, then do this to make sure your work is good. All right, so as you can see, we got this all done. I sprayed the paint on there. I gave it a final scuff on the table and uh, there was no low spots left. It just took a little bit more sanding. It wasn't a big deal at all. So now we're all ready to go. So there's a few other videos of work that I've done. Um, if you want to learn how to do a basic porting on here, nothing insane. I mean, we're not going for, you know, a 500 horsepower, you know, monster in the Jeep or anything. Um, basically we're just cleaning it up a little bit. We'll get better fuel economy. There will be a little bit better performance. Um, you know, uh, there's a few tricks that I can show you with the valves as well as with the combustion chamber. So there'll be a couple of videos coming out on these exact heads of the work that I've done. Um, so if you're interested in that, just keep following along and watch for the next videos to come out. Best thing I would say to do is uh, like, share, and subscribe and hit that little bell. Uh, that way you get notified when these videos are dropped.